up, us two friends. It is Friday, July 7th. I last saw you guys a couple days ago on Wednesday when I was filming my July update. I'm still editing that video. I talk way too much sometimes. There is just way too much footage from, from that video session, so it's taking me a long time to edit. It's taking me so long, in fact, that I decided for August that I was going to try doing a vlog style video. I normally only do them for special occasions like mania or other other challenges like the Olympic challenge. But I noticed that they take up a lot less editing time. I also feel like I'm able to give you more details when I do it this way because there's less time that passes between when I work on a project and when I talk about it. So I'm more likely to remember to talk about specific details of the project. So I hope you guys don't mind. If you do, I guess, let me know. I just think moving forward, vlog style videos will save me a lot of time and will make regular updates a little bit more easy. Maybe I can figure out a way to kind of do a hybrid vlog slash regular floss to update. So this will be a month of experiments, I guess. In any case, when I saw you on Wednesday, I was telling you that I was nearly finished with Turn Turn by Noteworthy Needle. Uh, yesterday, Thursday morning, I finally finished it up. And there we are. As I mentioned, I don't think I will be FFOing it this year. I'm not sure, I'm gonna put it away for now. And if the mood strikes me later on, I'll pull it back out and consider FFOing it. Um, talk about thread chicken with this one. This is all I have left from the kit. So no garden gate left. I was really sweating that one. I used up the very last of it. Garden gate is what's used for the tree trunks. No B5200 left. That wasn't a big deal because obviously I have a million skeins of that in my stash. And uh, I, I very nearly ran out of autumn leaves. I was sweating that color as well. That's obviously the autumn leaf color. So, and this blue thread here is for finishing. That's why it hasn't been used yet. I thought there's tons of it left, but that was a close one. It was uh, nerve wracking. A lot of suspense there about whether I was gonna make it or not. So in any case, this is finished. So that's one more year of whips down. As I mentioned in my last video, I am trying to complete the year of whips challenge this month. I only need to complete three more. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about what I'm going to do next. So the way I've kind of decided to tackle August is to alternate between working on a year of whips goal and working on a whip go goal. So turn turn was a year of whips goal that was complete because I completed the project. So I've decided every Sunday I'm going to switch projects and pull out a new year of whips and work throughout the week to try and finish that. And once that is finished, I can take a look at my WIPGO board, which I will insert a picture of here, and I can pick a goal on the WIPGO board and try and complete that with the remaining days I have in the week. And I think that system will work. It will keep me from getting too bored working on one project, and it will keep things kind of fresh. Some of the goals are easier than others. Some of them will take several weeks to, to complete, but I, I, think, I think it's a good way to kind of make some progress on my yearly goals this month. So after I finished Turn Turn, which was a year of whip, I took a look at my board and the next closest whip go goal, the, the next goal that was closest to completion was my goal for Coffee Quaker. My goal for the year for this was to restart it and to stitch six motifs. 
And when you last saw it on Wednesday, I had very nearly completed this motif over here, this sixth motif. So after I finished turn turn on Thursday, I pulled this out and finished this motif here. So now I have completed six motifs. I have technically completed the goal. I had a little bit more time that night, so I went ahead and started this motif above. I'm pretty happy with how these colors are turning out. I think this looks a lot better than my previous conversion. I really like this green color over here, weathered bronze. I'm hoping to pull this out again this year at some point, but since its goal is complete, it's going to go away for now. So as I have mentioned in previous videos, each of these women on my Fabulous Women in History Stitch Along in Clouds Factory counts as a Year of Whips project for my challenge. So on Sunday, I will pull this out and work on the next woman over here, which is Queen Victoria. I think this is totally doable to get three women done this month. It should only take a couple days in the week to complete them as long as I am doing focus stitching. They're not that big. And uh, these women along here do not have as many color changes. I think Queen Victoria is mostly purple, blue, and black. So I think once I get into a rhythm, I should be able to complete, you know, one woman in three days. So on Sunday, I'm going to pull this out and start Queen Victoria over here. But it's still Friday morning, and I still have some time before I have to do that. So what am I going to work on Friday and Saturday? Well, I was looking at my Whipco board, and this project hasn't been called yet, but I'm really itching to work on it. I think it's because it's a super gray day today. It's raining a lot, and I need something cheerful and springy. So this is Blossom by Carolyn Manning Designs. I'm stitching this along with Deborah. Uh, from Stitch the Stash. Hi, Debbie. We're both stitching it on pink fabric, which is super cheerful. So this is where I'm at now. My goal for this for the year is to complete 20 flowers on the design. So I've done eight so far. I think that if I do some focus stitching this weekend, I can complete another 12, maybe. They're not very big. Some of them are only a few stitches. So I'm just going to work on this today and tomorrow and see how much I can get done and see if I can check off another Whipco box ahead of schedule. Like I said, this hasn't been called yet, but I don't know, Whipco is kind of, it's kind of like a, you make your own rules for Whipco. You don't have to do it exactly how Justin Marie does it. So, which is what I like about it. I'm just trying to black out the board by the end of the year. So yeah, so I am going to go get a second cup of coffee and put this on my Q-snap and try and get a few stitches in this morning and this afternoon. And I will check in with you guys on Sunday to show you how far along I got. Hello, friends. It is Thursday morning and I'm up super early because I couldn't sleep. So I thought I'd do a quick vlog and update you on my progress. So over the weekend, I worked on Blossom by Carolyn Manning Designs. Here. And my goal for this for the year, my Whipco goal was to complete 20 flowers, and those are done. I've gotten 20 done, and I've got a little bit more of the tree complete as well. So, pretty happy with that progress. And I'm going to put this away for a little while. I hope I'll have a chance to take this out again this year and get a little bit more done. It didn't take that long to get those those flowers done. Once you get into working on this, you develop kind of a rhythm of um, working with the colors and, and whatnot. So hopefully if I get ahead on some other things, I can pull this back out at some point soon. So I completed my work on Blossom on Monday morning and between Monday afternoon and last night, I managed to get Queen Victoria done from Fabulous Women. So that's another year of whip down. Two more to go. Um, I did her as charted. 
Not too much to say about that. She stitched up pretty quickly. So now it's time to work on another Ripco hole. This project is Deco Spirits by Marabalia. It's on my Ripco board twice for the year. Um, my goal for the whole year is to finish this panel here, fire, and this, I'm sorry, this panel, which is earth, and this panel, which is fire. As you can see, earth is nearly complete. Fire, I've barely started, but I think um, I can complete the earth panel certainly before the end of the weekend. There's only a little bit of cross-stitching to do in here. I think this is all regular DMC, not, not, um, so it shouldn't take too long. And then some back stitching needs to happen around the border and a little more back stitching around her body and hands here. So I, sh I should be able to complete at least that Ripco box this weekend. And if I have time, I guess I'll keep working on it into the fire panel and see if I can get a little progress on that as well. I haven't worked on this in a long time. I really, really love this piece. It's full coverage, but it's easy full coverage. It's my kind of full coverage. Not too many color changes, not too much confetti. So I'm looking forward to that. So I'm going to go upstairs and uh, I've got an audiobook that's going to expire in a couple hours that I'm going to try and finish before it expires. I always leave things to the last minute. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to work on this until I feel like I need a nap, <laughs> which will probably be soon. Hey friends, I thought I would check in with you. It is Friday afternoon, about one o'clock. Just wanted to show you how far along I got on Deco Spirits yesterday. So this, by the way, is what the project will look like all finished. You can tell this is an older chart because uh, this, is, this is just a photo. Looks like it was printed at like Walgreens or something. It's a date on it, March, 1996. <laughs> um, it's a good picture. I just think that's fun. So any, anyway, I finished the earth block. So I'm now a quarter of the way done with this project. I got all the back stitching done. I uh, got these letters done down here with Krynik. Black back stitching. This hand looks a little weird. That's how it is on the chart, you know, and how it looks in the picture. It, I'm probably just looking at it too much and overthinking it. I guess it goes with the kind of art deco style of the piece, so I'm going to leave it, but I'm really thrilled with how this turned out. I saved all the blending filament that was in over here for last, which was a mistake because that was frustrating. This this uh, blending filament I did over here earlier on looks a lot better because I had more patience. I was doing, you know, one, it's two strands of DMC 413 and one strand of Krynik blending filament together. It called for one strand of DMC and one strand of blending filament, but that was way, way too light in coverage. So then I did two strands and then that got annoying, you know, because the blending filament always gets tucked up underneath the DMC and then you never see it. So I was doing one leg of the cross in DMC, going over that with blending filament, doing the next leg in DMC, going over that with blending filament, had two needles going at the same time. It took a lot of time. I uh, got impatient over here and it doesn't look as good. You can kind of see where a lot of the blending filament is tucked under the floss, but that's okay. You can't, I mean, you can sort of tell when you pull back, but I'm okay with it. Cause there's also huge chunks of, of DMC 413 just in, in the project. So I'm trying to let go of perfection a little bit. Otherwise I will never finish all my whips. So sometimes you just gotta get things done, right? Anyway, if I was a responsible person, I would be working on fire right now, the fire panel, because I would also like to get this panel done by the end of the year. That's uh, what it will look like finished. And I just have this little section started up here. But I think instead I'm going to put this away and pick up another project. I don't know what yet. I have to think about it. I'm really itching to get a, a finish in of some kind. I have a couple smaller ones from Mania that if I worked on today and tomorrow, maybe I could get one of my little prairie birds done or something like that. 
I have a secret stitch I've been working on that's nearly complete. I think, you know, I'm kind of itching to pull out a sampler. I don't know why. I'm not sure. I have to think about it a bit. You'll know soon. <laughs> and uh, before I go back to stitching, I'm just going to do a little sewing here. I'm working on sewing a little bunting banner to match the quilt I made for the nursery. I just have a blank, it's kind of like a big blank space over the crib that I want to put something on, but I don't want to put anything heavy or dangerous. So I thought I would use some of my fabric scraps to sew a little bit of bunting and we'll see how it turns out. It's probably unnecessary, but my points aren't very good. I'm having a hard time getting sharp points on these triangles. But again, I will never finish it if I focus on perfection. So we're just going to aim for done. And when I finish, we'll see how it turns out. And if it doesn't look good, that's okay. You don't have to use it. So I will catch up with you in a bit. So I got my bunting all done. It's not super straight. Triangle points. <laughs> Some of the triangle points are a little flat, but whatever. It's done. It looks cute. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, goes nicely with the uh, with the quilt. So yeah, fills up that wall nicely. It was a quick project. I'll link in the video the YouTube tutorial I used. It was pretty quick and easy. It just took about an afternoon. So it's Thursday and I haven't done a good job keeping up with blocking. I did stitch over the weekend but it was, it was kind of a busy weekend. There was some, a lot of errands to run, um, some appointments to take care of, so I didn't get as much done as I wanted to. But I did stitch a little bit on this Mania Start Christmas Calories by Sue Hillis. So I'll insert a picture here of the, where it was the last time you saw it. I had barely started the cherry. And then I did get a little bit of work done on it over the weekend. It's stitching up pretty quickly. That's maybe like a third of the design, right? I mean, obviously it gets bigger as you get down towards the bottom. But I'm enjoying it. These little motifs are fun to complete. They don't have that many colors. I have to add the back stitching into that row and then that row will be done and I can move on to the next row of text. But I think it's turning out really nicely on this opalescent fabric. You can see the sparkle here. Uh, I'm hoping to pull this back out this weekend and kind of work towards completing it this month so I can knock another whip off. But that's what I worked on Friday, Saturday. I also worked it on, on it on Sunday. I was supposed to switch projects, but I had gotten so little done on Friday and Saturday, I worked on it a bit on Sunday. So what am I working on now? So I was supposed to pull out A Fabulous Woman on Sunday or Monday and work on that the first three days of the week, but I don't know. I, I, I really want to get a full whip done. So I decided to pull out a different year of whips project. Uh, and this also, my whip go goal for this project also happens to be to complete it. So I figured I would knock off, you know, two birds with one stone this week if I could complete this project. So I pulled out Maple Sugar, which is a heart of the country design. I got this project at a thrift store already started several years ago when I was on vacation in Pennsylvania and restarted it on Eden Weave because the original stitcher had made some mistakes on the Ada and um, have been working on it for a couple years. All, um, it's on the Q-Snap already, so I'm going to put a picture in of where you saw it the last time. Um, and so far since Monday, I've, um, I've finished, you can't see because it's tucked into my Q-snap over here, but I have finished um, this section here. I just had to finish the logs and the snow and do some backstitching. I finished the backstitching up here on the dad and the tree, so that's all done. You can see kind of like tucked in back there. And um, right now I'm working on this wood shed. So it's Thursday morning and I think I can have this done by Sunday night. 
and finish another year of whip and another whip go goal. So this is really not that much left. It's just this building here, which is only about three or four colors. Um, this tree, the trees are a little bit of a pain in the butt with the back stitching, but I've got a good chunk of it done. And then the people go pretty fast because there's not really that many stitches in them. So yeah. The little boy and the little girl that's what that's what's left i think i can get this done this week if not this week i can get it done certainly by tuesday i bet if i stay off my phone and concentrate so i'm gonna get back to stitching and uh, put on some floss tube and i will catch up with you guys on sunday and let you know where i'm at hi friends it is monday afternoon and late last night I finished up this project. This is Maple Sugar by Heart of the Country Designs, designed by Donna Sparrow. Sparrow. So I'll show you that there. I am. Um, I haven't seen this chart. This is what. This is what it looks like as charted. I haven't seen this pattern anywhere else. I think I mentioned before that I bought this at a thrift store in Pennsylvania, an open chart with a partially worked on project. I haven't seen it on eBay or done by any other stitchers, so somebody next door is using power tools. I hope you can't hear that. Oh, it's a leaf blower. That's my landlord going by with the leaf blower. <laughs> Pause, please. Okay, <laughs> this is my fault for not recording earlier in the day. I usually try and record clips in the morning before the street gets busy. <laughs> anyway, so as, what I was trying to say is I haven't seen this chart anywhere else, so I don't know how available it is uh, if you're looking for it. But in any case, I have finished it. I stitched it with all the called for DMC. The only difference is that it calls for this like cobblestone colored Ada or linen. And I had Needleworkers Delight, also known as Silk Weaver, dye this piece of fabric for me. I believe the name of the fabric is Sudden Storm, but I did have them dye it for me slightly darker with less white so that the snow would show up better. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to have this whip complete. That's another year of whip down. That's another whip go goal down. Felt, um, it felt good to get this one off my list. So I have about seven days left in the month um, to complete my year of whip challenge. Because I had said a few times in this video, I think, that I wanted to finish up that challenge before the 1st of September to get it out of the way. So I only need to finish one more and I have seven days left in the month. And uh, originally I was just going to do a fabulous woman, but um, since it felt so good to get a real, to get a full project complete, I have decided that I think um, I'm going to finish up Hockey Santa instead. And um, that will, again, complete a whip goal goal and your whip goal in one, uh, in one go. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I can finish this fellow up in seven days. I seem to remember that there is a counting error somewhere in here. I don't, I think it's in his hat. There's something off, so I'm not sure if I have to do any frogging. I'll have to take a look at the chart and see. Um, and see. So I'm gonna go put this on my cue snap and get to work on this. And, um, We'll go from there and I will check in with you guys when this is done, which hopefully won't take all week. I'm kind of enjoying working on cold weather things. We have a bit of a heat wave going on here. So anyway, I will, uh, I'll see you guys in a couple days, I hope. Hi friends, it's Sunday morning. So I just wanted to fill you in on how the rest of my week went. So on Friday night, I finished up Hockey Santa here made a few changes to him. This is stitched two over two on, this is Charles Craft DMC brand linen. Um, 
Irish linen, I think is what it's called. I think the colorway is like tea dyed or something. You used to be able to buy this at Michael's all the time and I haven't seen it in a couple years. So I have a couple pieces of it and my plan was to just stitch all my prairie schoolers or as many as possible on the pieces I have. Kind of like a, it's, got kind of, it's like a stiff, got like a burlapy feel to it. It's not the greatest linen, but I think it looks pretty good for these designs. Um, so I made some changes. Um, I used the same red that I used for Gardening Santa, which I think is 347. Um, let's see here. So I did make a couple changes to how it was charted. Um, the red called for was 221, but I think I mentioned in my Mania video with Gardening Santa that that red is kind of pink now. The color might have changed over the years, um, or I don't know. So uh, I used the same red for him, which is DMC 347. Um, the green I used is 501, which is what's called for. For the skin, I used um, DMC 948 which is like the palest pale Caucasian color. Um, it's like my skin tone <laughs> in the winter is DMC 948. Doesn't get much paler than that. And then for his cheek color, I used um, DMC 758. And then I think everything else, oh, instead of, it called for, Ecru for the white, but I used Blanc instead, DMC white. So other than that, it's as charted. So yeah, so he's all finished up. So technically I have now completed half of my year whip goals. Yay, which means I have technically completed the challenge. I still have to stay in the positive for Stitch from Stash for the rest of the year to officially complete it, but um, I'm excited. I've never, I've never met that goal before. I think I can maybe get a couple more of them finished before the end of the year, which would be great because I'd also like to reduce my whip count and um, there's a couple more finishes I need to meet my whip goal goals, but in general, I'm pretty happy. And it is uh, August 30th, so I finished, uh, I finished this on Friday. So I finished this like three days ahead of schedule. So that's, um, that's great. So what did I work on next? So then Friday night, I pulled out my um, Needles and Pins by Theron Traditions. This is a sal I'm doing with Candace Slublover Stitches, Shelly Keck Stitch, Jenny the Long Dog Stitcher, Seems So Vintage is also um, stitching along with us. And if you would like to stitch along with us, please do. Um, this chart's like only $4 on 123 Stitch. Just love those little guinea pig sheep things. Oh. Those are technically sheep, right? Oh, I can use those for the Black Needle Society. So the Black Needle Society is doing a virtual retreat next weekend, and there's um, some stitching challenges going on. And one of the challenges is like to stitch on something with sheep. I didn't think I had anything with sheep, but I think that those are technically supposed to be sheep, even though I'm calling them guinea pigs. So I, that means I can use this project for that challenge. Ah. Great. Anyway, so I worked on this a little bit Friday night. I'll insert a picture here of where it was the last time you saw it. But I really didn't get very much done because I found out I thought I had ordered all the colors I needed for this project at my last one, two, three order, but I'm missing four. And uh, those four colors are for this flower over here. They're the, it's for, I'm missing these like, yellow gold colors that are in this flower and then in this basket. So I got a little discouraged and then put it away. But um, since this is kind of like a wedding samplery type piece and September is our anniversary month, I think I'm going to make this kind of my focus piece for September for in the evenings. So I'm going to pull it out maybe every night that I'm able to stitch and um, and put a couple stitches in. 
So with that in mind, I'm gonna have to order those four colors. It's super annoying to have to order four DMC. I, I'm trying not to go into stores right now. We're both trying to pretty strictly quarantine, even though the COVID situation has improved a lot in New York City. Um, if Dylan tests positive for, they're gonna test us when we go into the hospital to give birth. And if Dylan tests positive, he's not allowed to stay uh, for the birth of his child. <laughs> so we're, we've been pretty strictly isolating for the past couple weeks and plan to continue until the baby arrives. And then obviously a little bit after that. So I'm not super comfortable going into Michael's to pick up floss, but they don't offer shipping for single skeins of DMC, neither does Joanne's. Um, I know I can order them from, from an L&S or 123, so I might have to do that, but it's super annoying to order only four skeins of DMC. So I'm gonna end up buying something else. You know how it goes. I'll figure something out. First world problems. My, my point is, is that I'm, I'm gonna have to pick up those colors somehow so that I can work on this in September a little bit. So that was my Friday. So then on Saturday, it was the 29th of August. And on the 29th, um, Erin Two Martini Stitcher has been hosting the Long Dog Weekday Sal, where a bunch of people um, started long dogs on leap day in February with the goal of completing them before the next leap day in four years. <laughs> and I started this long dog for that sow. So on the 29th when I can, if there's nothing else I need to work on, I like to try and work on my long dog. Haven't pulled this out in a couple months. So I figured since I had an opening in my stitching schedule, I would pull it out. So I'll insert a picture here of where it was the last time you saw it, which I think was in April. And I got a little bit done yesterday. So I thought that this would be, it would be good to get some of the black outline done here. This is the edge of the design over here. I just need to carry this border across and down. So that's the far edge of the design. And I thought it would be good, since I have the digital retreat coming up this weekend, to get some of the black outline in so that I would have some easy um, coloring in to do. So I can very easily, while chatting with people on Zoom or you know, um, participating in challenges, just bring this border across and down and you know, bring these blue lines across here and fill in these flowers and vines because once the outline's there it's um kind of just like coloring in so that's what i got done yesterday we'll see if i pull this out again this week before the retreat so there's two days left in the month so i think what i'm going to do is i have some secret stitching that's nearly complete i'm going to pull that out today and tomorrow and see if i can finish that up and get that FFO'd and shipped off to the recipient so I can show you guys. In terms of September goals and plans, it's kind of hard to say what that month is going to look like. This kid could come anytime. So, as I mentioned, I think in the evenings, as long as I have time to stitch, I will work on needles and pins in the evenings. And I suppose during the day, in the mornings, if as for as long as I have stitching time, maybe we'll make September kind of sampler month and I'll see if I can get a few stitches into the other samplers I have on the go. I have, I have a couple samplers, including this one going on right now. So I guess we'll do sampler September for as long as we can <laughs> and go from there. This might be, the end of this vlog. We'll see if I have a whole lot else to report in the next two days. It's probably going to need a little bit of an intro and, and, an, and an end, in which case um, I guess you'll see that now. <laughs>